This one is completely boneless in one piece. This one is completely boneless, you know, kind of in one piece, but we took those that row of bones out with the fillet knife. Hey guys, welcome to Hooked Up Wisconsin. Caleb Wistead here. Today, we're gonna show you exactly how to fillet a mid-sized trout. So a trout between probably 12 and, you know, maybe 28, 30 inches. This is a 22 inch splake, a great eating fish, and a perfect example of what you can expect when filleting pretty much any trout. So the knives we're using today are a Bubba 7 inch tapered flex and a Bubba 6 inch ultra flex. And these two knives are gonna get the job done. I'll definitely leave a link for both of these knives in the description so you guys can pick them up. If you haven't watched my fish care video, make sure you watch that. I'll leave a link right here. That kind of gives you some tips leading up to this process, how to bleed the fish, ice it, and take care of it. I have lots of other fillet videos coming up on the channel, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those videos. All right, let's get started and get this fish filleted. I'm going to be using this fish carcass right here for kind of a reference to the bone structure of the fish as we go along. But you can see that first cut right here, and we're going to start that by just placing our knife right here at the same angle of the fish's head there and slicing down and then I can curve it up a little bit into the head right here to catch some of this meat and I don't want to go all the way down into the guts that's a mistake a lot of people make when they're cleaning a fish is they just saw through till they hit the backbone but then you're cutting open stomach and all kinds of other things that we don't want to get on our fish um, as you can see I just cut sliced through the meat I didn't actually slice into any of the guts there now once we get to this point, we are going to hit the backbone right there. So our, the knife tip goes straight down. And then right here, we're going to turn the knife. As you can see right there. And we're just going to slice the skin just along the midline of the fish. Now you can see right here, there's a row of bones that come all the way to the back of the fish, straight into the backbone. We want to stay just on this side of the backbone and that row of bones coming out. I'm going to take my 6 inch ultra flex and I'm going to push it in there and the reason I'm using this is because there's a little bit of an indentation here and to really get down to the bones in that without going across and missing some of the meat you have to have a real flexible knife so as I do this I'm going to be pushing the knife downward and kind of back towards the bottom of the fish to kind of get that make sure we get that little dip in the bone Now I'm going to follow that line down to right about where this anal fin is here. I'm going to switch the knives back over to the 7 inch tapered flex. And now I'm going to angle my knife basically from the front of the dorsal fin to the front of the anal fin. And I'm going to take that, the rest of that off just by following the backbone down. You can kind of run your knife just right along that backbone, angle down a little bit and kind of just tick it up across each one of those pieces of backbone and you'll get that meat out of the the inside now the reason that i angle this across is we don't want to cut guts so we don't want to just stick it through and go straight across because we'll hit ribs and guts but the ribs end right about here so we kind of want to stick it through and slice that way right there we're just poking out right there and then we just follow that backbone down like I said, you, you can kind of hop your knife a little bit to get over those little ridges in the backbone. All the way to the tail. When we pop through the tail, you just want to angle your knife up at the very end right here and just pop it right through. And as you can see when I flip that over, we got a nice clean cut following that backbone right down and we didn't get into any of the ribs here. Now, we've got to get over the top of the ribs. I like to use my seven inch flex for this because it's got a little bit more backbone to it. And you, there's some pin bones. Basically, there's some pin bones. You can see them right here. And they stick off the spine straight out into the meat. Right here on every vertebrae, there's a pin bone. And we're gonna to have to slice through those. So right here, I can feel them. You can almost hear them on my knife. Hear that? Those are the pin bones. I'm up against those. I've got to cut through them to do this effectively. So I'm going to put a little pressure on and just pop 
through those pin bones like that. Now, once I get through those pin bones, I am on top of the backbone. If I don't angle my knife back down again to go down the other side, I'm going to miss a little meat. So I'm going to angle my knife down to follow the ribs down. Now, most of the time, when you're flaying a trout, you don't want to pull on any of the meat because you're going to pull some sections of that meat apart. But as you kind of go down the ribs, you can pull just like this. And you get a little bit more meat from between the ribs that way. Does not hurt at all right there to do a little tug. All right, so now we have the whole entire filet sitting right here. Um, but it's still attached to the fish by the belly meat. So I like to get a little extra meat, belly meat, even if I'm not going to keep it with the fish just for a little extra room. But uh, so I'm going to cut it fairly low to the belly there. Now we got this fillet separated from the fish super clean as you can see with that flex I was able to get down in that that divot and really get that meat out of there uh, I missed one little little tiny piece right here but uh, other than that it's basically as clean as you can possibly get and then as we came over that rib cage remember I popped through those pin bones well instead of uh, instead of just keeping on going up I turned my knife right away and went down again so you can see how you get all that rib meat off there really cleanly so uh, that's one side I'm gonna set this guy aside now <clears throat> so we have two things left to do here I always like to keep my table really clean so I'm gonna squeegee that slime and blood away just like that so we have a nice clean surface to work with now for skinning you can use the 7 inch taper tapered flex which is a great skinning knife but I actually like to use the 6 inch ultra flex just because that thinner blade slides through better and, and easier. To use that, you're gonna have to get the fillet right up to the edge of the table, no matter what, what knife you're using. You want it right up to the edge, so you have room for that handle to be below the edge of the table. And we're just gonna just slice right here, and then keep our knife angled down just enough to kind of just skim the skin. And it'll cut real easy, but I don't wanna I don't want to put too much downward pressure or I'm going to start taking some of that meat off too close to the skin, which we don't want. There we go. Come straight across all the way through, just like that. Now, see what I have left here. Since I didn't put too much downward pressure on it, I left a lot of that fatty skin right on the skin itself so I don't have to trim it off the back. Anything under here, this is all fatty skin. You can see if I had really pushed my knife down, I would have gotten all that. And that stuff is not the best tasting. Um, it depends on your preference, but that does have a fishier taste to it. So I like to leave it just a little bit off the skin. Um, and then as you can see on the back side of the filet, very clean. We just have that one little strip of that fatty stuff right in the center. So. I, uh, I like to keep my fillets nice and clean looking, so if we have little little stuff that needs trimming, I'll trim it up now, just along the edges. You know, some of this, this fat here, we can take that off, make a nice clean edge there. Same here, there's a little bit of fat around that adipose fin, we can trim that off. And then a little bit right here. The fat on fish typically just doesn't have a good flavor to it. It's a... Uh, that's where all the fishy taste comes from. So we'll make that nice and clean. All right, now we have a really beautiful filet. Looking good, but there's still bones in here. Remember the pin bones right here? This row right here, you can see them sticking up. All right, there's two ways we can get rid of those. On this filet, I'm gonna show you the easiest way, the quickest way, and that's to filet them out. But I do have a cleaner looking way that takes a little more time that I'll show you on the next fillet after this one and uh, that's basically called bone tweezers and we can actually pull these bones out without slicing the fillet in half lengthwise but right now I will show you how to remove these bones I'm going to use again the six inch ultra flex for this now I'm going to find those bones by running my finger along and you can you can hear almost hear that and you can see them poking up there now on a trout, these bones sort of angle this way. 
So we're going to follow the bone down with our knife as it angles towards the back. And you can feel that knife when it ticks the bone. You don't want to use much pressure, very light pressure. Again, you don't want to pull anything apart. You're just slicing, feeling those bones with the tip of the knife, with the knife point, and just following them down. Now see how they're kind of angling towards the back there? And I like to kind of push through there just to keep that meat away so I can see what I'm doing as I go. And we're just separating from the bones and kind of turning our knife at that angle. Okay, there's the last bone right there, so that's where we're gonna stop. Now we have to come back and actually slice those bones out. So same thing, I'm gonna push my knife in on this side, get it nice and close, because we don't wanna waste any meat if possible. And then just follow those bones down with light pressure. Slicing at an angle towards the back again. Till we get to that last bone right there. And as you can see, you can almost see through that strip. It's a very, very, very little meat loss there. And uh, then we can just fold that right back. And now this whole entire filet is completely boneless, um, really nice. We do have a little bit of trim up we could do here on the back if we want to get that extra fat off. And that would just entail, you know, kind of running your knife along here and just trimming out that fat. Uh, you can't ever get it all unless you actually separate this, but you can get 99% of it. And trim up a little bit right here. But the, the, the less deep you skin the fish, the less of that you'll have to do at this stage. So there's a really nice looking filet. We're gonna do the other side and then I'll show you my other method to remove the pin bones. All right, so obviously the other side here is just a reverse engineering of how we did the front side. We're gonna take that cut behind the head and then get that cut started right here. Then I'm gonna to switch to my six inch ultra flex Again, we can feel those bones, those pin bones. We're just gonna cut right through those. And then up and over the ribs and back down the other side. Again, we're gonna get this filet nice and close to the table edge. Just like that. Again, all that fat is still attached right there. We can trim it up a little bit. Trim this little bit of fat right here. And that side's pretty good. And then this side looks pretty good too. So okay. now, I'll show you the trick for getting these pin bones out without having to actually slice through the filet. Again, we can run our finger over the top of these pin bones, and these are uh, fish bone pliers. They're, you can find them on Amazon. I'll definitely leave a link for you for these. But basically, we're going to push down with a piece of the plier jaws on each side of the bone until you can kind of grab just the bone itself, and then we're just going to pull it out. So I don't want to yank too hard. Just pull slow, and they'll come out one at a time. It's not a fast process by any means, but it is going to leave us a really cool looking one piece filet with uh, no slice down the middle. So we're just going to go down the row here and just keep pulling them out all the way down. And if you need to, uh, if you need to feel them again, you can kind of run your hand over the bones this way and they'll kind of pop out at you. And you just keep pulling one at a time. Just like that. And now this whole area here, totally free of bones and it's still connected. So we're just gonna keep going. 
Well, there you have it. Two ways to fillet a trout. This one is completely boneless in one piece. This one is completely boneless, you know, kind of in one piece, but we took those that row of bones out with the fillet knife. They both look decent, but I really prefer this one. It's just a better product, and you don't have that slice through it. It's going to cook up in one chunk, and um, that's pretty much all you need to know. So, again, Bubba 7 inch tapered flex, 6 inch ultra flex are the two knives we use for this application. And then the fish bone pliers right here. I'll leave, leave a link for all three of those in the description. And hopefully, this helps you guys out.